Don't be scared of the dark, the light will shine in. These are the words that you'll find on the website for House of H. They are based in the Cape Town CBD and are a restaurant that's the brainchild of owners Heinrich and Christina, also known as H and Poppy. Heinrich, you know, you started out as a chef, first yeah. and foremost. So how did you get into the food industry and why did you decide to get into it? Well, I mean, I had that at a certain time I, of my life. I did a whole lot of catering when I was in high school, like like on weekends to keep us busy for pocket money and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I decided at grade 11 that I'm not going to go study at Stellenbosch or go sit in the office thing for seven years, that I'd rather go and cook because you can see you make people smile at the end of the day. And I don't want to be the best in the world, but I want to be good and consistent and if I'm good and consistent I'll always have a job no matter where we go so I mean it's been like a 18 year 20 years in different kitchens and stuff and opening up things for celebrity chefs and the whole Madame Zagara group and now we've started our own thing about two years ago so yeah. this has been something I'm sure that's been mulling for for a couple of years um, while you were actually still doing you know yeah. your other jobs and you were thinking about it I mean, when that little spark went off, what was the first thing you thought about? I mean, at first I had to find the place, you know, uh -huh. like you, you, you're going to build something around the space that you have. And like, we've managed to find a little parking lot in, in the CBD. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were looking for a much bigger space, but we managed to like, after two years now, our, the project that we had in mind is now all, almost in fruition properly. And yeah, we've started, like we've reinvented a little parking lot. Uh, into a little self-service sustainable restaurant and yeah we've managed to keep it open the doors and in these tough times it's quite yeah, tough and yeah. I mean but we have been through it for so many years that it's it's a natural thing you know like we I don't want to stress or be stressed about anything we just gotta put your head down and soldier on and there you go uh, we're still here you know so true now speaking of we all know that this is the toughest cookie in town because <laughs> yeah. poppy is the one i say the one because poppy i know for a fact that you are running around you're sorting things out you're like that one that's sort of the, the glue that sticks everything yeah. together so the parking lot tell me a bit more about that you know i mean you guys see a parking lot and you think hmm, restaurant it's not something that's going to be on everyone's yeah. like you know oh. minds you know it's not going to be the first thing they're going to think about yeah no, for sure. But it, I mean, this space kind of just spoke to us. And uh -huh. I mean, when we talk parking lot, it was a parking lot for like five cars. Four cars. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, you know, as big as it seems, saying parking lot, it wasn't that big. And I think the space kind of just spoke to us. Like, it kind yeah. of made sense where the water and the electricity points were. Mm -hmm. um, and we could sort of just envision the restaurant in it. So, so the, the decor and the theme, because I mean, you guys have got a very specific theme going here. Mm. Although it seems like everything has like got its little pocketed spaces. It's actually all connected together. So tell me a bit more about that. So, I mean, we started off with very little money and mm. it was a question of just making ends meet and making with what we had. So mm. we, having come from the film industry, I actually had a friend that had bought an entire set from a TV series that had been canned. Mm. And she literally said, rock up with a truck and empty out my house. Oh my goodness. So we backyard. ended up, yeah. <laughs> so we ended up with like piles and piles of wood and all kinds of odd little things. Mm. And we just built whatever we could out of what we found and got. So everything's recycled, upcycled. Mm. And yeah, and it's kind of just, I mean, we've put a, our own aesthetic or stamp on it. Uh. But it's kind of just evolved into what it is. Yeah, I mean, we, we, when we eventually got some money going, we like your investment items like ovens and mm. oh. the stove and the fryer and the things that's going to last you, dishwasher and those type of things. You just go and buy out straight out. So you earn the stuff and it's not on a rental mm. that you've got linked up for five years and you're mm. paying off someone else. So we just went out to auction houses. Um, lots of different friends and bought everything that we needed in the kitchen because i used to set up big kitchens three four kitchens in a year um, so it was my, it's an easy thing for me to do but with this we could i knew how we could save money and work with what we had and i mean 
We opened the doors and the place was pretty gray and empty. Mm -hmm. But now, look, I mean, if you look at pictures from two years ago, there's so much more to it. And that's all things that we've gathered along with the time. And I mean, we don't just pick up any piece anywhere. I mean, yeah. everything has this little place, you know? Mm -hmm. You'll see it and it's like, oh, it's gonna go there. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's a space that's sort of grown and evolved over the last yeah, two and a half years, which is actually quite nice. We're always just giving it our own little touches. touches. Mm, yeah. I mean, we're not trying to conform to anyone else. Uh. And we just got a self-service self system in the restaurant that no one else has. And mm. It makes us pretty... I mean, mm. if you get, want to be unique, you need to stand out and not just try to conform to what everyone else is doing, you know, like, uh, that's what's going to make you. And with me, it was always the food. I mean, if you do the food consistently yeah. in a restaurant, people mm. always come back for that. Everything else I always say to people is it's uh, extracurricular activities. <laughs> you know? so, I like that. To me, it's, yeah. it's about the restaurant. If the mm. restaurant's always going to be full, I mean, everything else will be filled up. And I mean, We've got a we've got a space now that's that's like a event space and twenty first birthdays and wedding ceremonies and things goes down here, fortieth birthdays, so we've kind of extended from the basement, and we've got the rooftop space now as well that we. We're slowly still building. That's almost there. We still got another no, think, bar stuff, stuff coming on. I think the moral of the story though is that you don't have to spend thousands and thousands of rands. It's like you know just buying the crockery and the plates and stuff. If you've got certain suppliers that you've got good relationships with, you can yeah. always rock up there and instead of buying the new stuff at like the premium price off the shelves, you can always ask them like, listen, don't you have a back storeroom of like plates that's been returned that people couldn't pay for mm -hmm. eventually? And, then, and you know, they're more than willing to let you actually scratch through the stuff that they can't sell anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but that is still perfectly usable. Like there's nothing wrong with it and you get it at such a discounted price so. well, that's very interesting yeah. so now you guys have obviously i mean it's it's been probably times of being in the trenches and mm -hmm. then it's been times of like you know floating up the river mm. <laughs> and everything's you know all yeah. smooth sailing but what has been i would say the biggest or the toughest challenges and obstacles that has come your way the main problem with oh. taking a parking lot is it doesn't come with any of your permits or licensing, licensing or oh. anything in place. Yeah. And obviously running a restaurant, you need its health and safety, air ventilation, mechanical, so liquor licensing. fire safety, all of that. So like you have to tick all of those boxes from scratch. Mm. Um, which is if you know what you're doing it's pretty easy to do but it's like a year and a half process mm. of like just dealing with those various departments and making sure that you tick all the boxes and the bylaws are forever changing mm -hmm. so where you were compliant two months ago you're not compliant now so then you've got to adapt and the thing is eventually you get there and mm. you get the licensing and you get the permits and everything but it, that is quite a tedious mm. process. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something that That's, gets a lot of like new restaurants and things down. Like over the past two years, I mean, we see five to six diff different restaurants closing down mm. and a whole lot more opening up, you know? And it's like, I know that those guys don't have liquor licenses, so you can't really trade by not selling booze. If people mm. come out to a restaurant, they want to sit and have a meal and a drink. And you know, you can't still tell mm. them, oh, let's bring your own. People are not going to still stop at the, at, oh. the, at the liquor store on the way to dinner, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're going to get dressed and you're going to go for dinner because yeah. you're going to find everything there. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, it's like, um, like I said as well, with food, like, you gotta, you gotta really have something different or something that's consistent that people's going to come back for. Mm. I mean, I know when people walk in the door, some folk I really know what they're going to have, you know, mm. um, because we've built up that relationship with people over there. It's, oh. it's always, I mean trying to start something new i mean it's starting it's new people that you need to start employing you mean, yeah you new. need to trust the people you then need to work with the people and then some are find that yes this is going to be a person that's going to be with you for the yeah. next year or two but everyone loses the, the momentum and vision and all of those things so you have it's to about, keep it going you've oh, got to be that uh, dude every day sure. that's, that's oh, like sure. yeah we're doing this uh, you know we're doing that you always got to bring something different mm. always got to show because even as a chef like, that's been around for like 20 years there's always someone new or younger that's gonna bring you something different and just mm. the way that they are you know so yeah. i think it's the people and then also the people that you have to deal with on a daily basis how do you 
How do you, How do you take them it? in? Yeah. I mean, not everyone's the happiest person when they walk <laughs> in the door, you know? It's yeah. about us changing them yeah. with, with food. And I mean, mm. that's the way like to that. anyone's heart, you know? Mm. So, okay, so we took a look at the challenges and the mm. obstacles, mm. but there must have been some big highlights that you guys have had as well. Anything that you can think of? I mean, I think every month when I can pay the rent and I can pay <laughs> salaries, I'm <Yay>! like, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm still here. Uh, I think most people I can, of, can, can resonate with it. Okay, I think you kind of, I mean, we've had one or two. I mean, I could, it's the little moments though. It's like, it's when a guy walks in with his lunch date and he secretly comes and asks you at the back whether he can propose to her Aww. up on the roof, you know. Aww. And then seeing the actual happiness that happens with that, you know, mm. it's little things like that that is actually it's being able to create little moments for mm. people that they take with them through life. Wow. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's all sorts of uh, celebrity that walks in the door at all times, and I mean, I don't treat anyone different. That's what we, and I mean, I dress the way I want to. It's mostly in a short and a t-shirt. Yeah, but I mean, highlights would and be also just being, yeah, just being recognized by Etot, yeah, and being as one of the top five hundred. Yeah. We missed it the one year. We were on it the first year, missed it the second year. Yeah. We were on it. Again, we're on it again now. So that's like well, a nice I think highlight. Personally, from yeah. what I've seen, I actually saw it start, and then I just saw boom. Mm. There you are, there you are, there you are. You guys were just like literally everywhere. And you've still maintained that because mm. you still have so much of this publicity going on, which is really great because it just kind of like brings everything back full circle. Yeah, the thing is we started very, we very quietly started and it's yeah, all sort really of word of mouth. Mm. Yeah. And, and then, and then after like, that it was, like a, it was like a bang. And, and I remember that bang. And it's nice to see that word of mouth yes, sort of work. starting to explode mm. and work. And oh, it's great. Wow. Okay, yeah. let's get let's get to the menu. Mm. The the foods that you have on your menu. I know that you've also gone with even your vegan yeah. uh, selection of choices as well. Obviously, with everything changing, I'm sure you guys have to adapt all the time. Change the menu, bring this in here, bring this in there. Yeah. So, but there must be your favorites that you like keeping on there, and then there must obviously be those that you sort of change around. And then yeah. there must be also those moments when you decide, okay, I'm going to go full on with this and do like a Mursa special and just go yeah, crazy. I mean, so we, how does the whole menu work here? Like we, I started with five things. Like I said, if it's on your hands, you can't eff it up. You know, like uh -huh. one, two, three, four, five. So uh -huh. there's burgers, there's a steak, there's one or two, like a wings and a fish and chips. That's five things. Mm -hmm. If that's on the board, we don't have to do all of the other special things but because we do those five things consistently we can concentrate on a specials board i mean there we do slow roasted beef ribs we do a slow roasted brisket sandwich like a 16 hour roasted and smoked brisket sandwich 16 hours yeah wow uh, we do <laughs> yeah from time to time like a swordfish and a tuna a bit of kudu vos, a wagyu burger that always comes around but I mean, we change the specials board around a lot. I mean, now on the Wednesday with the Cape Town Mag, we're doing 50 Rand, doing a crumb chicken fed cook for 50 Rand lunch special between Lincoln. 12 and 5 on a Wednesday. Um, because it, people that work around town, they don't really want to go and fork out that 100 bucks for lunch. They want to spend like 50, 60 bucks mm. that quick lunch. So we offer it on a takeaway, also down. Um, like with winter time coming, we do two for one ribs on a Monday. Like so our Monday nights are super packed <laughs> and the oven it just stinks of beef ribs all day. The whole place is just So like, you do you so you guys both go home stinking of beef and yeah, then what do you does. think? Oh you can see So I was gonna say what do the kids say but now I'm gonna ask what does Poppy say? Yeah. like But I mean it's been a thing for like oh, eighteen God. years, man. It's not a it's not like mm. I don't think of it. Um, yeah. The thing is, in our, our specials menu will always be seasonal and whatever is available. Yeah, available like we yeah. do local seasonal produce, so yeah. Yeah. it's nothing out of the ordinary or weird. Now, like a, we started like a veggie garden with um, some city of Cape Town initiatives. Wow, nice. Uh, there's three gardens now that I can, on a daily, uh, fresh spinach, kale, um, all the vegetables like that walks yeah. you have with the trolley. And I mean, we've got a friend that does the micro herbs and he mm -hmm. drops us off 
basil parsley mint on a weekly basis because wow. I go through wow. like kilos of these things in our mm. green sauce that we do on everything, you know, like. But so it's so important that attention to detail and actually getting the fresh produce because people can taste it in your food. Yeah. Mm. And a lot of people yeah. have kind of lost that and they're like, oh no, it's fine. And I'll just like, and yeah. I'm, if I go into a restaurant, I can taste when something's been sitting or whether it's actually no. been frozen. fresh or frozen yeah. or yeah. Mm. Like, yeah, so we, we dry aged the really meats, you know, we dry aged the meat cuts, so the meat's wow. always like uh, at a good 35 to 40 day age, like all the, on all the steaks. We had our own homemade burgers, we had our own homemade buns that we make yeah. every day. Yeah. So everything's made in the house, I can tell you exactly <laughs> how old it is and when wow. it was made and yeah, the I whole mean, story behind it. The other nice thing is that we're actually halal friendly. Having opened on Loop Street, we realized that there's quite a big halal following um so yeah. we've never served pork yeah oh, okay. and we make sure that our meat comes from halal certified butchers um yeah that's wonderful so yeah. for the next couple of years where do you guys see yourselves progressing <laughs> uh, Poppy would say, oh, she's there, giving uh, like laugh, yeah, when the lease I, is done. Oh. I would like to sell it when the lease is un <laughs> done, yeah, and yeah. Uh, go do something that only requires you and me oh. and no staff yeah. members. Oh. <laughs> I would, I would want to, like, my favorite plan is to go, go overseas somewhere, maybe. Mm. Like, I don't think um, we should, like, stop thinking about that. I mean, if you want to make real money one day. Mm -hmm. We can try the international market as well. Well, the world is your oyster. Well, brands like brands say. like Dashes and people like that are doing mm -hmm. it. You know, it's just yeah. about finding the right place and going for it. And mm -hmm. if you guys were to give, I would say uh, this two. It's going to be like a two-way thing here right now. Okay, yeah. so it's going to be advice for people who want to start up their own business, and then this specifically in the restaurant sort of industry or anything else that you find you would would like to sort of like uh, relate that to. And then secondly, it would be as a couple. What advice do you have for couples who work together? Because I think it's amazing that the two of you are such a powerhouse on your own and you make this work every day. And it's tough. Uh, I'm sure you have your ups and mm -hmm. downs. I'm not, yeah. I'm not uh, uh, it twinkled at me. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, it's an awesome. So the first question, yeah. first question. I don't know who's yes. answering that one. Uh, start small. <laughs> start Rather small. start smaller with less money mm. and Hold on that. Yeah. Don't don't go big, and then crash. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Also, I mean, like if you if you're going into restaurants or into kitchens, you gotta love this with the passion. Yeah, you can't. There's no backing off. You know, like you gotta have a full understanding of all the spectrums of like the restaurant from the front to the back, to the back to the front. Oh. Um, so yeah, I, I I don't think people that open up restaurants are like. That they, I think they all have their bit that they take in with them and opening up their own things, but it's it's, it's quite hard. You gotta love it with a passion because you need to be the most passionate dude out there on a daily basis. Yeah. It's because we, we've got a brand, we, we're representing the brand. I'm not just myself, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of people and it's always a team effort. Mm -hmm. You need a team behind you, you can't do it by yourself. Sure. And it's about yeah, building the right team with you. That's that's got that same drive and passion. That's got that the ones to follow you. Yeah, you know? but you also need to be very hands on. You can't yeah. set up a restaurant, put managers in place, and then walk away yeah. thinking that it will just yeah. sort of do its thing. It's um, <laughs> people walking in the <laughs> You actually need to be yeah, quite hands on. Yeah. I think in the current economic climate that we're in, yes, yes. the more hands on you are, um, the better. better. Yeah. Yeah. And as a couple, how do you guys keep going? <laughs> we make a good team because yeah. like, I don't know anything about food. I know little bits, having been with him for 18 years, but uh, I don't, you know, his field of expertise is food mm -hmm. and my field of expertise is a whole host of other things. <laughs> so I think I together, like it's like food so, and Christina got so so everything else. I just cook here, I don't know about that. Sometimes I just feel like the driver, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, no. <clears throat> so I think the two of us bring different things to the party that makes it a good team. Listen, we don't always agree mm. on everything, and we're both very strong-headed. Passionate people. It's so passionate. <laughs> so we do. I mean, we've had situations where we've had arguments in the restaurant where the staff would be like, <laughs> they're divorcing today. Like, 
people and I just carry on. I think we've got a healthy relationship where we do we respect each other mm. and each other's and we give each other we trust each other to make certain decisions and yeah. I think and we still fun. know how to have fun together. Yeah, but that's yeah, very so, important and also understanding the mechanism of what this mm. is. So it's mm. kinda like, okay, this is work, it happened, we had a moment mm. and it's done now. Mm. And then just moving on because obviously this is this is the, the other baby. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So it has to keep going. Mm. Guys, thank you so much. Thank this you. is amazing. I think it's wonderful what you have done here. And I think you must continue pushing forward mm -hmm. whether it's yeah or whether it's just expanding across the whole of south africa or africa or going overseas whatever it is yeah. because the world is your oyster and yeah. i think what's happening now especially because economic times are so tough the true passionate people that are really those hard workers that's actually coming to show it's showing a lot more these mm. days so yeah it's it's tough but when you put your everything yeah. into it then you can achieve so much mm. Thank you. Thank you.